Welcome to another edition of Confidently Speaking with DOC. I am your host, David Doc Shirey, author of the book, Rare Confidence, Strategies and Inspiration to Strengthen Your Belief that You Can Achieve Anything. And we have got another great show tonight for you. We have got a remarkable married couple, the dynamic duo. Not only have they accomplished amazing things, they are helping so many others accomplish amazing things. And I can't wait to introduce them and bring them on here in a minute. But first, just a couple reminders. This was designed to be a participatory program. That's the way it's set up. So please comment and ask questions and we will do our best. When I say we, I mean me. I will do my best to get as many of those on the air as possible. Also, if you can hit the share button, that will allow the show to increase our reach and continue to bring on national guests like we have tonight. And we have got some incredible guests coming up in the days and weeks ahead. I am super excited to introduce tonight's guests, Tristan and Sabrina Truscott, founders of Satori Method. Collectively, they've got over 70 years of experience in three core disciplines, martial arts, the performing arts, and meditation. Additionally, they have 25 plus years of teaching these arts. Tristan, as a young man, became involved in martial arts when he began his study of the mind-body-spirit connection and after many years of training, was granted the coveted level of black belt. And then he went on to build a thriving martial arts academy with 450 active students. Sabrina has a rich background in dance and theatrical production. She studied performance arts at the Neighborhood Playhouse in New York City, where she worked as an actress in soap operas, commercials, and musical theater before headed out to Los Angeles for a TV acting career. Back in Austin, Texas, Sabrina used the skills that she learned to co-create, direct, and MC the enormously successful charity Dancing with the Stars Austin, Texas edition for over 10 years, which generated over $11 million for the Center for Child Protection in Austin, Texas. This dynamic duo now run a seven-figure online healing and coaching business through monetizing the power of personal connection and live video streaming. They've developed easy-to-implement training programs to help other holistic practitioners, wellness coaches, and transformational leaders launch and expand their online and offline businesses. I am so excited to welcome Tristan and Sabrina Truscott to the program. Hello, and Sabrina and Hello. Tristan. Hello. That was awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. You know, I haven't seen you guys in like nine years, and you look like you've reversed the aging process. So maybe that will be another show. <laughs> Ask her. She has all the secrets. All right. You know, Tristan. I met you and Sabrina in San Diego in 2011, and I knew I had to put you in the book. And there you are, chapter three, the first interview with the black belt. And I loved your quote. You said to the effect that, hey, there comes a time in every life when you look in the mirror and you got to tell yourself you got something to offer when you're a good person who walks the talk with integrity. It's easier to claim your space. Now is the time to share what I know, make a difference and pay it forward. Love it, Tristan. Yeah, and baby. I owe you an apology, Sabrina, because if I knew then what I know now, it would have been a dual interview and you would have been in the book too. So please accept my apology. Apology accepted. And you know, I have to step out of the spotlight every now and then. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever want to do that, Sabrina. <laughs> you know, we first met back in 2011 at, in San Diego at something called the World's Greatest Speaker Training, which was like a four-day seminar put on by Brendan Burchard, Bo Eason was there. He did his famous one-man play, Runt of the Litter, that yep. if I'm not mistaken was the longest running, is still the longest running one-man play in Broadway history. The, the phenomenal Shalene Johnson was there. Roger Love, the 
voice coach to the stars. And you know, I made so many great connections there. You guys and my friend Zuza and Adele Anwar, who's also in the book, who is the uh, Guinness record holder for human memory. And, um, you know, it's connections like that that you never want to let go of. And again, I'm so appreciative for you guys. I was immediately drawn to you then because of your incredible energy. You both had this confidence and this energy about you. And, you know, I went on to write a book about confidence, and that's why I immediately wanted to get to know you better. And you guys both had this, like, strength, but strength through kindness that kind of emanated from you. And, and I love that. And turns out when I found out more about you, why that was. And, and, and as I was even preparing for the show tonight, I, I have to tell you, Sabrina, I saw you in a clip with um, in Dancing uh, for the Stars, the Austin edition, and you were dancing to Singing in the Rain. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a Pittsburgher through and through. And Gene Kelly is a favorite son of Pittsburgh. And I just have to show a quick clip of you from that night. <laughs> Come on with the rain, I will smile on my face. I walk down the lane with a happy refrain, just singing, singing in the rain. Dancing in the rain. You know, I just want my audience to know I don't just bring anybody on this show, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so beautiful. Oh, man. That was just a couple of years ago at the fundraiser. To totally awesome stuff. All right. Cool. Um, I want I want to maybe just touch on each of your backgrounds real quick. Tristan, I know yours a little bit because I interviewed you for the book. And I remember you sharing with me how you grew up in England and, and uh, in your own words, you told me, and I wrote this in the book, in your own words, you were kind of a nervous and a scared kid. And obviously, you've, you've gotten past that. Um, and, you know, you went on to become a black belt. And I know that that has helped and it certainly got you through that period. Can you share with our audience a little bit about your upbringing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still feel like that little boy every now and then. But I got a Sabrina in my corner, so I'm all right now. No, as a little guy, I definitely had a lot of nerves. And I think people today would call it psychosomatic disorders because I would like have the sweaty palms and my body would shake if I had to get up in front of class and do a book report. So all these years later, getting to speak and teach and help people go beyond their own fears is just like it gets put in you when you're young, like the things you want to overcome. I think those are the things that make us rise and they give us a direction and a mission. And so this life today is totally that it's like how can we help other people tap into their organic natural confidence so they can really live as their true self because that wasn't my true self when i was a kid and i was scared i always knew there's a barrier or a wall blocking me from being the person i want to be i don't feel that wall so much anymore and i don't see a wall at all and sabrina as i was uh, trying to come up with some nice cool graphics and videos i came across some Sabrina <laughs> from back in the day. And I did a little research and I un uncovered that not only were you in Mr. Belvedere, Matlock, Night Court, here's a couple shots of you from the TV <laughs> film, The Stepford Children, amongst others. And I totally remember that girl right there from that wow. TV film. And I just think that is absolutely <laughs> awesome, this Sabrina. You did your research. I did do my research. Sabrina, where did you grow up? Where, where did I grow up? Yes. Um, I actually, um, it's a long story. I'll make it very short. I grew up in, in Virginia and I had never even been on an airplane or left the state of Virginia. And through a series of law of attraction and miracles and God calling me to expand, I actually got a phone call from a soap opera in New York saying I looked like someone who was leaving and I was doing plays and theater and dancing. I never thought about doing it professionally because uh, my father told me I should work for NASA. 
Um, so I was like, okay. And I just got a call to move to New York. And that was the first time I had been on an airplane or left the state. And I was 19 and moved to New York. And um, I, they, they got me agents and managers. And then ABC took me to Los Angeles. And acting and dancing and performing for me was the place that I escaped, like Tristan, my own anxiety. Um, I, I had a lot. I was so hard on myself. I had an ulcer at the age of eight, perfectionist, overachiever, eating disorders. But when I was dancing and singing and acting and playing, pretending to be someone else, that was the happiest that I was. That was when I actually was dropping into a permission to play and a permission to be whatever colors of me wanted to come out without judgment. Mm -hmm. And we actually met right around the time of that Stepford clip that you just showed, maybe a year and a half later when we were 20 years old in a meditation class because we were both seeking life has to be more than this. There has to be deeper meaning and, and a sense of freedom. You took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to ask you how you guys met and about that. But Tristan, I know about 20 years ago, you went through what you called a transformation. I want to show this brief clip. It's a couple of minutes long, and then we can talk about it. But this will probably give the audience a better understanding as to where you've been and where you are now. Okay. At one point, my dojo was the largest in Austin, Texas, but I didn't know anything about business. I knew about my mission. I was meant to teach. And when I got the first taste of teaching, I was hooked. And that was my life. So I also knew though, if you're going to teach, you better also walk the talk. And I started to teach not just like the traditional karate and like forms and things. I wanted to know it translated to protect yourself. So I started wearing these suits, these high intensity suits where people could hit, but it didn't hurt. You felt it but you could keep going. And my body took a beating, but I'm here to serve, man. Let's just show up. And I was using my meditation to cut the feelings of pain in my body. And one day, I'm teaching a self-defense class, and I'm showing these ladies, it's like knee elbow strike. And I, I put my leg down, I go to the next group, and I just fell on my back. And, and it was so much pain shooting through my spine. And I've, I've been hit. I mean, I've been kicked in the head, I've been kicked in the face, I've been punched, I've been choked. You name it, I always get back up. Not this day. I couldn't get up. They carried me out of my dojo. Carried me out. And for months, I couldn't even get up out of the bed. And I wasn't healing. WTF, what is going on? Like, why? I'm getting scared now. So I'd show up to the dojo once I could start standing a little or sitting. I'd take big pillows all the time. But I'd sit in front of my class <clears throat> and I'd teach with words. I learned to articulate very well. And I'd use my best students to take my words and tell them how to move and all of that. And then I did it for as long as I could. I started losing students. You can't keep it up. I had noticed he wasn't able to participate in a lot of things. Lots of people were talking about what is he going to do? Um, because of, he was so restricted in movement. He wasn't the same person. And I was sitting there with my friends and I see his Jeep pull up. So he tried to get out and he tried to walk to get the handrail to get to the pool. And he was trying to go on the steps and he couldn't. He literally had to turn around to try to use the handrail to get back to his car. He could not even walk just to the water and the only place he could move at that time was in water and I have never felt so compelled f to anything in my life and we were close friends but not close enough for me to I got up I left the way of the friends and I just walked up to him and I said I'm so sorry this is happening to you see she knew me as the athlete I danced in her dance classes I, I danced in her performances I learned that art from her. And she sees this guy broken. And <clears throat> she said, with tears in her eyes, this isn't your back pain anymore. It's ours. I mean, you two are awesome together. You're a true team, <laughs> the way that it should be. I mean, any, any other couple out there that just saw that piece, they should take some notes.
I was. <laughs> <laughs> Good reminders. Thank you. Just, just amazing. All right. Before we get into all the great stuff that you guys are doing now, like go live with confidence. And I want to talk about, you know, how to get into flow, even when things aren't flowing. I, when, whenever I think of you guys, I think of the Satori method. Because I know this is a method that you guys co-created. And um, I, if you can, can you share with our audience what it is, how you developed it, and how does it help people? It's really a method of awakening the natural confidence and consciousness that's in all of us. We all have this incredible inner genius, whatever you want to call that where we feel like we're in flow, we know what to do, when to do it. And sometimes we even just know how to do it. There's like this knowing, and it's it's to designed to help people through movement and mainly moving meditations, unlock that inner knowing. And you know it when it's unlocked, you're like, there's no question there, there's no doubter there. It's like, no, this is my truth. So that's a big deal for us is to live from that place. So Satori means awakening. We're trying to help people awaken the consciousness, but not just one time, not to have like a grand epiphany one day where everything becomes clear, but how do you integrate that into your everyday life? Like we could say everyday enlightenment so that you always are asking the question, what's the most loving and conscious action I could take right now? Always on the, the tip of your breath, what's the most loving and conscious action I could take right now? Growing my business, in my relationships, with myself, with my creator, and that's what's up for us. That's mm -hmm. the mission. Yeah. And that could sound soft, <laughs> right? Oh, what's the most loving and kind thing I can do right now? Well, sometimes <laughs> that most loving and, and kind thing is to be very strong and very aggressive and very powerful and very physical and to talk really loud and to have rules. Right? Angel so bear. <laughs> Angel bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's... um. There's a concept that people have about yeah. loving and kindness. The most loving and kind thing is what is aligned for me to do and say and respond in this moment. And with Satori me Method, uh, we both, it, it includes the body. You know, it isn't about escaping the body just like woo-woo in the heavens. It's, it's heaven and earth unite, really embracing the beauty of all the emotions of, of the physical body, of the human experience, of experiencing all the, all the senses, all the joy, all the sorrow, and the complete connection and alignment to God's source, whatever anyone wants to call that. And that goes right in line with something that I hear um, I've heard Tristan say on a number of occasions, which is be love, serve love, make a difference. What, what does that really mean? Well, my friend and friends, for us, the be love is the love you. Take care of yourself. Today, people call that self-care. Work out, go to the gym, get enough sleep. You know, do, do, do your part to take care of you. Be love, right? And then when you fill yourself up, you've got something to share. You have generosity, you have an abundance consciousness, and you naturally move into how may I serve? So take care of you so that you can take care of others is the MO. And if you do that, it's a simple equation. We think that's the way that you make the biggest difference in your own life and mm -hmm. your family, your clients, those who you serve. And, and that last make a difference was really our bridge when we started to certify people to teach some of our modalities and then work with other coaches, teachers, and healers to grow their own business that want to make a difference. Because I we don't feel that, and I was like, oh, I think I'll take on a body and have a life, and I'm just going to watch from the stadium, not really going to participate or add anything. I'm not really, no passion or purpose for me this time. I don't think that's the way it goes. So I, I think that everyone has something unique to share, whether it's turned into a business or not. For some people, it's 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 the mother, it's the grandmother, it's the wise one. But for a lot of the people in our community, it's a specialized knowledge and it's a skill and it's a talent that they are they are so in love with it and they love sharing it so much. And there's people that love to hear it specifically from them. The market can never be overpopulated because we all share what we love in a different way. Mm. One of the things that I 
that I know Tristan is fond of talking about is getting into state through releasing energy blocks and head trash. And, you know, I, I, I think I'm a semi-intelligent person. And when I read that, I can kind of gather what I think it means. But instead of me trying to decipher it, Tristan, why don't you just tell us what it means? What is this insanity the guy's talking about? Um, energy. We say around here, energy is everything, right? Like you've got a cool graphic there that shows the human body and it's got this matrix inside of it. And what I discovered on my healing journey from old ancient monks, Kung Fu monks, fighters, is that you've got these channels that the acupuncturists can manipulate with little needles and they're called meridian channels and uh, energy flows through them. It's life force. Japanese call it ki, the Chinese call it chi. It's prana by the yogis. It's just life force energy. But it gets disrupted and blocked. And when it's blocked, it causes physical issues in the body, but it also can create all kinds of um, emotional issues and builds up into head trash, just negative thinking. So what we discovered is that these guys, they were on track with clear and clean up your energy system. Think of Tai Chi, slow movements, the people you see in the park, and they're they're moving their chi, something called qigong. Wait, says, who moved their chi? Who moved their chi? Who moved their chi? <laughs> Damn it, somebody moved my chi. So you gotta you gotta claim your chi back and you gotta move it. You tap your body, you gotta move, squeeze, shape, do all these different things. It unblocks you. When your energy's flowing, the head trash naturally dissolves. And so that's what I mean by being in state. Is being in your natural aligned confident state. And right along with that, you guys talk a lot about, about how to flow, even when things on the outside aren't necessarily flowing, how to get into this thing called flow. And I know you just touched on that, but maybe you can share a little bit That's more. A good one. You want to jump in? Yeah, you know, lately I've been saying the flow must go on. <laughs> Right, because um, growing up performing, and and even like we have some technical difficulties with our business right now, um, yeah. where the server that holds all of our email lists, all of our emails, and all of our autoresponders, and the backup server died simultaneously, and it's, it can kind of freak you out because it feels like oh wow, seven years of my life is yeah. not accessible. And you know, waking up this morning, it's just like a oh, lump in the throat, kind of shaky, no way to communicate anything, no opt-in pages work, no Remember information, that. you know, what, what's going to happen. And then I teach a, a dance fitness class. I live stream it every morning at 830. So 8, 829, lump in the throat, nauseous, 830. Good morning, everyone. Are you ready to dance on the Tuesday? <laughs> so, so like the show must go on, the flow must go on. And um, it's a choice. And it is, it's a mental choice as well for me as an energetic choice. And what I'm really continuing to work on every single day for the past 30 years is not labeling something as not in flow. The only thing that's ever not in flow is me. Life is always as it should be, as I have created it, as it is a, a gift from the divine. And if I feel like it's not flowing, it's just I'm not embracing the blessing that I don't understand in the situation. Because even though like, it's just like totally horrible what's happening to our business right now. Did you explain what it was? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that it's, it's going to force us through a contraction to make certain choices that we would never make otherwise. It's going to force us to take actions and get what could even seem desperate or excited. It was already, it's already happening to clean up things that we wouldn't have otherwise. So for me that uh, the flow must go on is don't, don't swim up current, whatever is flowing. If I'm choosing daily to live my life in alignment with love, to be sensitive to my feelings, to feel what feels right. What is the best, most loving, kind action I can do every single moment? Wake up in the middle of the night. Can I choose love right now? So how could there be punishment or anything that's out of flow? The only thing that's out of flow is my judgment of it and my reaction to it and my small little human ideas that things should be different. So we have a lot of modalities that 
um, and activators that slip you back into alignment with love so that you're always flowing with the current of love. The flow must go on. I've already got like two or three new sayings just since we started. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, all right. So I know you guys are about to release a new program called Go Live with Confidence. Yeah. And I just want to show a quick video clip that kind of previews that. Cool. Well, we are so excited to take you through this program because by the end, you're going to know exactly what to do before you go live, while you're live, and after you've gone live, because that's where a lot of the fun part happens. I think some of the biggest challenges that people have, and we've certainly faced these, are the fears that show up about being on camera, right? I'm camera shy, mm, I don't feel comfortable or confident in front of the camera. And that's mm. usually because we're not sure what to say. This program is just gonna help you relax into your authenticity so that you can be yourself without being in your head about all the other stuff. We're yeah. gonna be teaching you exactly what to say right. and in what order. I think mainly people just make it too complicated from our home, right in this room. This is our dining room <laughs> with a mobile device and a selfie stick, we have generated hundreds of thousands of dollars. The other part is the technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, we wasted a lot of money on buying things we didn't need, and today yeah. you can really bootstrap this thing with a smartphone or device. But if you don't know what button to push or where to plug things and all that, that can pull your focus away right. from showing up lit up. So right. we want to remove all of that technical stuff so yeah. that you can just be totally present. Yeah, going five. It's been the number one way that we've grown our email list, that we've grown an audience of mm. raving fans, raving fans that say yes to our offers of our products and services on repeat. Boom. Now, you, guys, you guys said a lot there that piqued my interest, not the least of which was hundreds of thousands of dollars, but there was a lot, a lot in there. Before I even ask you a couple specific questions, you know, I got to ask you guys, you know, I've done nine of these episodes and there are times where somebody else is talking and I've caught my faces I'm making here. Here's just a couple of these ridiculous faces while, you know, my guests are talking and, you know, my wife says to me, Doc, why do you look like you're sleeping, like you're about to sneeze, like your your eyes are going to pop out of your head? I mean, what advice do you have for me? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, well, I always let people know I'm going to be clicking and clacking and I'm mad, you know, we're, we're the engineer and the, you know, we're, we're all of it. We're the talent. So they're a little more forgiving on those weird faces, but, uh, you got to remember, right? Obviously. And you're doing such a great job. I mean, I think you're awesome at this, but everybody, we just got to remember there's people there and stay lit up, stay connected with them. There's no freaking camera here. There's never a camera. There's an eyeball right there. It's right. a portal to people. And I'm checking the chat right now. So I'm always energetically feeling connected with who's here right now. And I see you guys, Lisa, and I see Tina, and I see Frederico, and Myra. all the peoples, and Myra, and some of our peeps, Kobe hopped in. And so they're like helping me just feel so like joyful, like you are right now. I think it's okay. You know, weird faces are good. And it, and it can just be a practice because I find, you know, we're both in our 50s. Um, parts of our face that used to be higher are now lower. <laughs> and so when they We all should be so lucky. Like you, <laughs> you're right. When, so there is a, um, uh, what would you, like an expression when someone is speaking and you're really listening, it feels more like, ah, I'm listening. And I think when I get that relaxed face, I actually am not listening, but I'm thinking about what they're saying. Or what I'm gonna say next. And so I've used seeing myself like that, or with when there's two of us, you know, one of us will be like. It's the relaxed B face, yeah. right? We all know what that is. Right, right. Just, just the, um, the humiliation of seeing it like a hundred times, you sort of stop doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when when Tristan and I were chatting before you you entered the room prior to the broadcast, Sabrina, Tristan shared with me that you have a confidence story that you would like to share. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it hadn't occurred to me. It hadn't occurred. That to was you. the name I gave it. Yeah. Um. So we're actually putting together a kit right now called On Camera Next Level Confidence and Charisma, because a lot of the people that we work with the words that they say is, I'm not confident in front of the camera. I don't know what to say. And I always share this story with them because it, it impacted me so much. I was uh, like renting. I, I always sort of became the organizer of things. 
so I think I had rented a dance studio and people were coming in and I was telling them, you know, put your things over there and you guys put your things over there and we'll put the mirrors there. And this is how the production's going to work. And this one woman who was older than me, she said to me, she goes, wow, how do you, how do you do that? And I said, what? And she goes, you're just so confident when you're telling people where to put their stuff. And I really listened to that. I'm really confident telling people where to put their stuff, like put your shoes over there, put your coat here. And I said, it, it just didn't occur to me to be insecure. And in that moment, I realized that I don't know if confidence really exists. It's the lack of self-consciousness and insecurity that we say is confident. I think that being solid in who you are and being comfortable with you, who you are, people can say, wow, you're so confident, but perhaps it's just that you're more in a place of service than you are in what do people think of me? Are they going to like me? Am I doing it right? Am I saying the right thing? Are they going to write bad things about me in the comments? Are you, can you be more in a place of service and be in a place of a helper a hundred percent? So there's no room left for self-consciousness and that will appear extremely confident. And I think that's true confidence from the inside out, not a class that you take that says sit straight, shoulders back, chin up, speak slowly and distinctly and people will think you're confident big difference in acting confident and just being and when you're just being you will come across as with rare confidence wow. love it love it love it um the check is in the mail so <laughs> <laughs> the people that you guys work with i know you you work with folks from all walks of life but a lot of them are people who have something to teach coaches, people who uplift others. And you just talked about confidence and charisma. And you guys actually teach how to exhibit that on the air. I guess my first question is, you know, um, do I need any help in that area? Uh, we always get better. And secondly, how do you teach that? You have a very natural charisma pouring off you. Again, we'll call it energy. It's a feeling when we're around someone, we say they've got nice energy. They've got good vibes, right? They're magnetic. There's a quality. So I don't know if you can teach it from the outside in. It's definitely to what Sabrina was saying. It's something inside of us. And I'll go back to the Satori method that we were discussing earlier, that we're clearing energy disruptions and blocks so we can unlock the natural us. My experience of charisma and confidence is that that shy little boy was just a filter that was blocking a very natural version of me that I just needed to know how to get in touch with. And so through doing that, and there are exercises that we teach people, you actually, it's an internal thing. It's not laying it on top of you like a mask. Yeah. I've done that, but inside you always feel like something's missing. I'm faking it till I make it versus, wait a minute, I'm just being me. I'm in flow. I know what I'm talking about. I don't care whether people are judging me or not because I like me. I'm just going to speak my truth. And when people hear that and they feel that, they say either I align to that person's beliefs and core values or not. Mm -hmm. But they always say, I like how authentic you are. I like how transparent you are. I like you. Yeah. It's that know, like, and trust, but it's an inside thing for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, For sure. And, and we do have, in, in this course we're creating, uh, we realize that we have developed. So let me just say, I think one of the worst experiences of my life have been when I've been in front of groups of people, and maybe you've experienced this because other people have told me they do, and I'm speaking, but I, I also am seeing myself from the outside. I'm judging myself that much. So I'm trying to speak like either on stage or to someone, but there's like another one of me over here looking at me, judging me. And so you can't concentrate. And then that's if that happens on a stage where they have those giant screens right. actually showing right. two, two of you, then there's four of you to judge. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so difficult to... Um, to truly connect to people because you aren't there. 
you're not fully there. You're like a cardboard cutout of yourself. And I think that's one of the, I think that anything that we teach is because we need it so desperately. And, and so everything that I teach with people about confidence and charisma is things that I needed to overcome my anxiety, to give myself permission. I've been calling it full spectrum me because we have some crystals near the front door are things that are crystal. And when the sunlight in the morning hits it, you, we get the prisms. And to me, that's, that's like full spectrum. It just looks clear. But when it has permission to be all the colors that it is, you know, how are you when you're with your dog different than your mother, different than a child? What if you're pretending to be a puppy? What if you were talking to a tree? Well, what if you were three years old? Like all of these things you can give yourself to find fun colors and give yourself permission to to play to play inside of yourself if there were no limits to the way you could express uh, with your voice with your personality with your uh, playfulness and so um, we're developing activators to help people do things before they go live before they film or even in the middle of filming a video when they start to feel shut down things they can remember because charisma the root word comes from um like gift from god coming from god a crack that the light comes forth through it's that it factor it's that sparkle and that will be there when the person is aligned to who they are, no matter what color it is. It's just when they're really being them, their eyes will, will sparkle and they'll be irresistible whether you like them or not. They have it. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's things that people can do to activate that crack to open so that when they do share their content and people hear it, the people feel so connected. And when you're teaching, the people know, like and trust you. And, and they can say, will you be my mentor? Will you be my teacher? Because they know you got them because they've they've seen that you are truly who you are and you're inviting them to be fully themselves. And you touched on it a couple minutes ago when you talked about authenticity and being genuine. And, you know, I mean, now that I'm 112 years old throughout my experience, I have learned that, you know, that's what that's what people want. Even when you're up in front of a large audience, you know, I in front of a you know really big audiences and i just remind myself when i see those other video boards and there's four of me like you touched on they don't care if you mess up they want to know that you're being real and that whole audience can tell in a split second if you are trying to be somebody you're not just like my audience right now can tell if i'm trying to be somebody i'm not and i would never do that but uh that's so true in all walks of life be yourself, man. Everybody else is already taken, right? Nice. I like that. Hey, we got a, We have a question for you, and I think my man Frederico has watched one too many mob movies, but it's a good question. <laughs> is it better to be loved or feared? Well, I think he knows. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, it has nothing to do with me because it's based on the other person. Ooh, it's all a projection. It's better right? to love. <laughs> That's no it. doubt. No doubt. All right, we have another question for you from David Kadosh. Tell us a way or two to instill confidence in someone who struggles with that. Hey, man, I hear you. I was so shut down and shy as a kid. And I think if we maybe shift the word instill to unlock, this could um, lend itself to the technique. So one of the things that I do, if I'm going to speak, let's let's jump to like you talked about speaking um from stage, I think you were referring to, and you know, there's going to be hundreds of people there. Sometimes we'll do a, a, a go live event where thousands of people have signed up for it. Um, I remember being on the news and you could hear the anchor and they're talking to back at the production and you're like, Oh shit, I'm about to go live. And you start freaking out and doing the two person judgment thing on yourself <laughs> that you're just toast. As soon as that happens, you're done. Right. You can't even <laughs> right. think yeah. you're in slow motion. <laughs> oh, it's, right? awful. it's horrible. Right. Uh. So what I do, one technique is I, I do a pre-training. It's sort of like a dress rehearsal. And I, I run, I mean, this isn't a, a new technique. It's like um, I, I run the experience firsthand. But I, if I'm speaking on stage, I'll go an hour before, the day before, and I'll stand on the stage. I'll look at every single chair, and I connect with each freaking chair. And I see somebody there, and they're looking back, and they're smiling. And then I see at the end everybody standing up, you know, saying that was awesome. Thank you. I did that at the last uh, one I spoke at. It was about three, 400 people. It was a guy named 
John Astroff, I think you mentioned from the hit movie and book, The Secret. And it was with a bunch of neuroscientists and stuff. And it was pretty cool. It was over the weekend. And then they asked the audience who they enjoyed, uh, the speakers, which one? Like a secret poll. They pulled yeah. it out. And, and it, w it was me. And I, I was like the energy guy, you know, but I told stories and I was in flow and I did my thing. But what I did before is I went in the night before and I looked at all the chairs and I connected energetically with each one in advance. And I said, that's my friend. That's my friend. That's someone who loves me. That's someone who I'm going to give them a hug afterwards. And I pre-staged the whole thing so that I could just show up and be me. There's no one out to get you. The tomatoes aren't lined up. You're <laughs> going to be fine. And I think that shifts your state so much so mm -hmm. that you are not in like this judgment thing. You're like, I'm with my friends. We're all our friends right. are here right now. And if right. they're not, they're going to leave. It's fine. Exactly. And there's so many similarities to speaking on a stage in front of 500 people and going live on the internet, right? Really a lot of similarities. And, you know, my next question to you is, you know, when that button goes on, boom, and it's flashing, boom, you know, live, I mean, it can be, it can be intimidating if it's the first time that you really have seen that and you're thinking all these eyeballs out there in the internet world are on me. So what makes a great live broadcast? <laughs> got to show up lit up, meaning you are already yeah. so pumped. If you know your audience, to me, that's the number one thing. I got to know the people in advance. If I don't, that's okay. I'll figure it out as we're going through the chat or live. I'm going to see it on their faces and you can tell whether or not you're landing. But if you can know your audience before and you know what most matters to them and where they're struggling the most and you really care and you really show up with empathy and, and the true wanting to serve them, you feel so excited to connect with them because I, we call it connect before you connect. It's like broadcast before you broadcast. Already get your energy going and flowing before you hit that button. Yep. So when you hit that button, you're like, I can't wait to hit that freaking button. My friends are there and I'm going to help them. Yeah. You don't get out of bed and run a marathon. You know, you right. kind of prepare a little bit. I think that uh, from, from showbiz, like, one of the things they always say is the audience remembers the first moment and the last moment, right? right? Those are our two really in, important moments. So for me to feel my most calm is I, I want to flow during my lives, but it, then you have to ask yourself, like, why are you going live? What, what is, what are you going to share? Do you have one point or three points? Maybe, you know, pre-think I'm going to I'm going to kind of talk about these three things, but I do craft my my intro. I might not have it totally memorized so that I, I have an opening that lets people know, hey, during this live, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to teach you this. And by the end of it, this is going to happen. So that it's a really good, uh, just like if you went to see a play or, you know, the MC comes out and lets you know how things are going to go. That makes the other people comfortable. And then I know the last thing that I'm going to say. So I don't ramble at the end, you know, trying to cut it off. And you're like, why did I keep talking? Why didn't I shut up? Right. So you kind of know how you're going to close it. But I think a lot of people are uncomfortable going live because they don't have any experience. And we teach a lot of our students to make a Facebook group and be the only one in it and just go live by yourself. Just go live by yourself and, and practice so that you don't have that. I've never gone live before. I've gone live a hundred times in my group with just my mother. And now I'm going to go live in front of other people too. That's, that, that's great advice. We have a couple questions for you guys. Herky Pollock wants to know, what are your most embarrassing public event moments and how did you rebound? <laughs> I remember one mastermind we were at and we had probably won from being on what's called a leaderboard, being an affiliate marketer. And we were in New York and I had been asked to get up and teach. And so kind of speaking to what we're talking about, dress rehearsal, prepare in advance. I do that mindset part for myself. I visualize it. I see it happening. I do that with business meetings. I see it going great, you know, all of that stuff. So that when I'm there, it's almost, I learned this from martial arts. The fight happens in the gym. It happens way before it ever happens in the street. So if it happens in the street, you're like, yeah, it was just like training, <laughs> right? So I pre-train everything. Well, in this particular event, I didn't train my brain for one thing, which was the people that I was going to be teaching 
or mentors. You know, there's a difference there, right? When it's yeah. people who are looking up to you versus people who are looking at you like, <laughs> what do you got? And I got up and I had that shutdown feeling. And we already felt like the newbies at this group. It's I, I get it. It so sucks. And I was like feeling the little jitters in my system. And I'm having to teach these really slow flowing movements. I think my fingers And I could hear his voice like. <laughs> and you just, you got to, what do you call it? The show must, the flow, flow must, must go, go on. on. The flow, flow must, must go, go on. on. So I just kept plodding through it and, and just trying to work the tools, but I'm hearing the two voices yeah. in my head. And you get done and you like, you know that you didn't crush it, but you have a choice right then and there. How are you going to spend the next moment, either beating yourself up or figuring out what you could do to make it better next time? And that's the one thing I've learned is you can fail forward. Failure is just feedback. It's okay. Who's judging? What is this judging thing in our head? Who did that? Yeah. It's okay. Mess up. In martial arts, I teach my students to mess up on purpose. Okay, mess up. Okay, good. Now let's move on. So that's how I look at it. Yeah. The worst thing that uh, that you can do is um, like mess up and pretend it doesn't happen. Right. You know, like if, if you're if you're dancing and and your hat falls off, you know, Everyone saw your hat fall off. It's okay to pick it up. Um, one of my most embarrassing moments, I was in a in a ballroom, a Latin, so I did ballroom dancing in Latin competition. And I had my hair in a bun and the costume was like two crisscross chopsticks, decorative fancy chopsticks. And during one move, I was supposed to swoop my part. I went under his arm. And as I swooped, the chopstick pierced his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> it was silk and I hear uh, and I rip his shirt and my so my head is caught inside of his shirt <laughs> and and so he tried to help me get out and as he did I had on like a strapless bra with oh, no. um, all rhinestones with one little strap around my neck when he tried to get me out he unhooked my one support system and so <laughs> I put my hand here and keep dancing. He's got a ripped shirt like a bull has attacked him. <laughs> my bun is over on the side of my head and those chopsticks are dangling. And I have to keep my hand on my breast the whole rest of the dance <laughs> so he didn't get disqualified. <laughs> nice. But I, I, I did it. I wish I had acknowledged to the audience that it was happening, but I was so in my head that I just kept thinking, they don't notice. They don't notice. <laughs> well, I was unable to find that video on the internet as I was preparing for the show. So <laughs> All right, we have another question for you from Vince Saka. And Vince wants to know, how would you handle a person who becomes agitated or angry with you when discussing a topic or situation that that person is not comfortable with or confident in? Um, just, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you, it depends, man. That's a very good question. How would you handle a person who becomes agitated or angry with you? Well, first of all, I've had that happen many a time. And you verbally de-escalate. It depends on the scenario. Are there other people around? So I'd have to know more about the scenario. But ultimately, I mean, it's just like you got to really like lean in to that and try to verbally de-escalate if you can and hear them. Listen, what agitated them? What provoked them? What triggered them? And see if there's something that you can do energetically, verbally to dismantle it. And if you can't, uh, you just have to agree to disagree. It's But at that point, it's all about can you handle agitation and people being angry? So here's how I inoculated myself from that as a martial artist and you could do this as a speaker too you could literally have somebody yell at you have somebody get irritated and make physical motions we used to push each other and get in each other's face so that we could energetically and chemically because the brain dumps chemicals inoculate ourselves to that so that we could then remain in state and function at our best perspective but if you've never done that you will start to react and maybe argue or fight or shake and not know what to do. So I would pre-train that. And, and then I think you'd be able to handle it pretty yeah. well. If it's during a, a video, like a live video, and you have, let's say 50 people who are really 
and flow with you and learning and so excited to be there and, and grow during the process. And someone says something that you can respond to that will help the whole or that you could respond to in a way that the other 49 people will say like, oh, wow, I remember how Sabrina handled that when that happens to me, then then go with that. The truth is, if that if it's obvious that you're speaking your truth and that person's being a bully, the other 49 people are probably going to jump on him in the comments and tell him to knock it off. And then I just I a couple times, if it's a troll, I just hit the, the block button. I, I kick him out of the live because I don't want that one person destroying the experience of 49 other people. Nice. Now, you guys truly are a dynamic duo. Here's another dynamic duo that I thought about. When I was <laughs> and, we, and we wear masks now, too. <laughs> yes, we all do. <laughs> what is the best advice that you can give others that are looking to build uh, a, a business, an online business empire? Know thy audience's problems. We're in the problem solving business. Don't lead with your modality, your technique, your product or service. Identify where they're struggling, really feel it and understand it from all the angles. Figure out what people are fed up with, right? Like I remember Sarah Blakely Spanx, right? On uh, Shark Tank, yeah. he said, three things you need to know to really have a successful business. I think she's spot on. Number one, find out what's the problem in the marketplace. Like solve, figure out something that needs solving. Secondly, figure out what are the products that are out there that are flawed or aren't doing the job. And thirdly, make it really clear how you're distinctly different and you actually can solve the problem. If you can articulate that, you're going to have clients and you can grow a business when you can solve problems and get people what they want. Great advice. Great advice. All right. We have one more question for you guys. What techniques do you use to clear your head of negative thoughts that keep racing in your mind? We breathe a lot. We meditate. We calm the brain, uh, especially in the morning. So you establish yourself in that state before all the daily grind kicks in. Because as entrepreneurs, we've got a lot of entrepreneurs here. You guys know there's many curveballs that happen all day long. So if you can anchor yourself in flow state first, we sit on the couch together. We breathe. We got the cavies. We all have cavaliers, right? Oh, cavies. Everybody the cavies. A cavy will help you clear your head space. I'll show you how to do it. Here, this is how you do it. A King Charles Cavalier. Yeah, come here, mister. Okay. Now, you don't have to have a cavalier, but it sure does help. <laughs> and you get one of these guys, and you just pet them. That's how you clear your mind. It's funny because we do the exact same thing here at the Shirey household. All right. It works. Hang with me for one minute, guys, while I um, give a little plug for what we got going on here on Thursday night. Awesome. Thursday night. Wow. Judy Phelps is a gun range owner. She's a Krav Maga instructor. She's a self-defense expert. She has a story that is so shocking from decades ago that got her into the world of of um, self-defense and responsible gun ownership and Second Amendment. I am not going to tell the story right now. I am going to let Judy tell it in her own words on Thursday night. But this is a show that you guys are not going to want to miss out there. So hopefully everybody will tune in on Thursday. Tristan and Sabrina, you guys have been absolutely awesome. You guys are so much fun and you just you just give off so much authenticity and energy and I loved having you on. H how can our audience find you online? Thank you, brother. You are amazing. You've done a fabulous job. I'd say one of the best uh, interviews we've ever had and all the B-roll and pre-roll. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate it to you. It's fantastic. Our website is satori method so it's spelled s-a-t-o-r-i method that's just a good starting place we're always posting cool stuff on there you'll see our social media we got all kinds of things to help you grow your business grow your life so go and explore satori and method regarding that last question that came in how do we sort of clear the head trash and the looping thoughts and connect back to love and get out of the self-consciousness we do um, just a free Facebook Live every Thursday night called the Tris Brina Show. And that's on our Satori Method business page. 
And um, every week we just share ways that we are we are uh, removing that which we don't want to claim more of that which we do want. So that that's a really good tool. Tris Brina sounds so much better than Brangelina. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, guys, I'm going to put you guys back in the uh, backstage for a minute. Hang with me till we get off the air. I'd like to chat with you and let me say goodbye to the audience real quick. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you. All right, you guys. You guys, the audience has been great. Wow. With guests like that, we can only continue to grow. Um, we have an incredible show coming up Thursday night. And the next week is going to be off the hook. I'm going to wait until the end of Thursday's show to share with you what we've got going on next week. But keep watching. You guys have been awesome. I love you.